Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. Every week, I hope you are following and enjoying the weekly channeling videos that I do. Today, we have a special guest and someone that I, I'm kind of surprised by. And this is the very first conversation I'm having with this particular afterlife guest. And I, I don't know any, I don't really know him at all. <laughs> so this is the first one. All right, so you're gonna really see me very raw and real as you often do, you know? I don't know a lot about this guy and it's gonna be clear. And some of you I know, especially with this particular individual, are gonna be mega fans. And so don't worry, don't worry, I will do other interviews, videos, channeling sessions, just discussions with this particular person so you can make comments to ask questions in the future. This is just an introduction video, how about that? You ready to find out who it is? All right. Welcome, Mr. David Bowie. So I'm gonna share with you how this came to be. So this morning I could feel someone as I was making my breakfast in the kitchen and cutting up my strawberries and I could feel someone in the kitchen off to my left. And I said, I said out loud, ah, I can feel somebody to channel today. And I thought, wow, that's interesting. I wasn't necessarily planning to channel. I wasn't planning not to channel either, but I thought, okay, I feel somebody, somebody's here. And not really familiar, didn't really know who it was. And so I just went about my business and did the coffee and all that. And I sat down to eat and I could start, I started to see the face of this person and he started to come closer. And I thought, okay, cause usually what happens is more is revealed. I just allow that. I don't force it. I don't push it. I just allow it to come closer. And David Bowie was on my list of two channel, people to channel, because I know that there are so many fans and I have a lot of fans and people that follow my work have followed my work for a long time from the UK and they're really big fans of Bowie. So I, uh, I wanted to honor that, but I never really felt a bond or a tie to him. So there wasn't really an inspiration for me to reach out. And so I was kind of surprised that he just showed up because that usually doesn't happen when I channel. So we should probably talk about that, why that is. And uh, maybe you can share some of that when we chat. He has a great energy, kind of fun, and kind of quiet. He has a good, his sense of humor is kind of like um, uh, sarcastic a little bit, or a straight line, or kind of dry, dry sense of humor. And doesn't like ramble or talk a lot, didn't right away when he came in. And in fact, I have a house guest. And so this morning at breakfast, we were chatting and we we're talking about Prince because that's how I know her. And so we were chatting and, um, you know, talked about Prince just a little bit. And then I shared with her that I had this, this dream type thing with Elvis last night, which is unusual. I don't usually have that. And just a little bit. And I was like, he has motorcycles. I didn't even know that. And then this morning, when I was telling her about that, then I told her, I see this guy, I see somebody, it's a man, and I know that there's an energy that I need to channel today. Interesting, huh? And then as I was sitting there, all of a sudden I went, gosh, he's got like big teeth, like his teeth, I'm really looking at his mouth. And I said, and then he has like kind of messy hair, it's like blondish, kind of-ish, blondish-like. And, um, <laughs> Oh man. And so I actually said, um, he looked like somebody else, like an American actor. And I'm like, but he's not dead. And she said, he's not dead. I'm like, I know. I wonder what the connection is. And then all of a sudden he steps out of the shadow and it's David Bowie. So that's how it worked. And so I'm not sure, um, David, may I call you David? Yeah, absolutely. Call me Dave. David, if you'd like. Davey or Dave or something. He's saying something else. Um, Dave. He, um, he says Dave's fine. He calls me mate, which to me, I think that's an Australian thing, not a UK thing, but maybe it is. I don't know, he was calling me mate. And he's like, okay, mate. And then I saw Elvis with him 
and um, like patting him on the back and saying, yeah, he's all right, he's all right, he's very talented. He said, I think he's even done some acting kind of a thing. They were joking a little bit. And so I'm like, oh, cool. So like Elvis brought David Bowie or made the connection. Again, the only way I can channel somebody is if I'm open to channel them. And he was on my list and it just kind of came up. So here we are. All right, so um, I don't know you at all. <laughs> um, and so I need to get to know you a bit. If you could help me do that, that would be great. I hope this isn't gonna be a long video. I'm sorry, you guys. It's a little rambly because I feel this all this energy and I don't know, I don't know what to expect because I don't know anything about this guy. Well, let's see, he's like, okay, so let's see. Um, he says, well, do you want me to start from the beginning? Like I was born in a small town on the hillside of, <laughs> no, no, that's okay. Um, I know, what I know about you is that you're well-known, very artistic, very entertainer, incredible voice. I know that you're kind of punk-like, that's what I, how I remember you or know of you, and very popular in Europe, and um, I know you were in a, a movie, I don't remember what movie, but you were in some kind of movie in the, like, the 90s, I think, or something. Um, again, I don't know any of that, but so can we talk a little bit? I don't think he was married. Doesn't look like he was. I don't see any women around him. Let me just say that. Um, well, okay, okay. This is this might be kind of morbid for you, a little bit of a downer. But can you talk to me a little bit about your passing? So I kind of have a feeling of connecting you to spirit because that's how I'm going to know you. I'm going to know you as spirit because I don't know you as a human. So can we start there because that will help me maybe get a little bit of my bearings. He says, there's not much to tell. Um, I had a disease and illness. Kind of rotted my body from the inside out. And he says, cancer. I think it was cancer. Looks like cancer. It's like he talks about his body being rotted from the inside out. That is not a pleasant depiction. He says, I know it's not pleasant, but it's the truth. It's true. I feel like he died in the fall late summer or fall. Close to the time when Prince died, I think. Did you die in 2016? Yes, later in the year, after Prince. After your Prince, he says. You know, I'm really bad with timing, so I hope that that's accurate, because <laughs> I have no idea. I'm thinking he's in his 60s. It feels like 61, 64, 60-something. 60 Oh, that's weird. I just see like 1964 for some reason. Um, 61, 64. I don't know. All right. Um, I feel like he has a brother. He's saying my brother. I don't know. He's, I don't know if it's an actual family brother or a good buddy friend that's a brother. Um, I feel like he had family around him. Oh, I'm not really sure on his private life either. I can't get a hit on the, the surroundings, but I feel like when he died, it was almost like a hospice type thing. Or he says, there's peace in the chaos. It was quite peaceful. My transition, as you would say, he says, is it was quite peaceful. It was quite peaceful. He said it was hard for my body to die, though. I'll say that. I will... I would say that it's hard for the body to die. It, it's, it's kind of ironic, isn't it? You, you live and, and you kind of take it for granted the day to day and then you, your body works so hard to die, to leave the life, to leave it behind. That's, that's a interesting tidbit that I would share, he says. And he says, where's your tea? You had tea this morning, you should have tea. I'm like, oh, yeah, well, maybe. I don't know. I'm not really. Did you spend a lot of time in the UK? Yes. He's like, that's where I was born and raised. Actually, he looks like he's not 
Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna look like a total ding dong to you guys, and maybe even just really stupid, and that's just okay because you know what? This is authentic. This is how channeling happens when you are actually being real about it and not getting edited and stuff. All right, so well, that was kind of sassy, but I just don't. You know, let's just be real here. Let's have a conversation. All right, so I feel like. So I said I'm going to look like a ding dong because I'm, I don't know the ge geography of the UK, the entire UK. I just don't know it. I can't see it in my head, the map or anything like that. Um, and it's like a little like island or chunks of island inlet area or something by the kind of by the water and it's really hilly. That's what it looks like to me. So it's around the UK. I don't know if it's like Scotland or if it's like on the edge of a, a coastal area or I'm not really sure, but I think he's from the UK. It feels like it, like he's showing me like the branching out um, of some kind of like a, gosh, uh, like a finger or an arm into the ocean kind of a thing. I don't know how to explain that area. I don't know if that's where he's from or that's where he considers home. Um, and then he said, you know, the Beatles in Liverpool, I spent some time there. Um, he said, the Beatles, that's what you would know. You, you know, you would know. I mean, he says your Beatles as if the Beatles were a US thing, you know. He says, you're a Beatles. Um, I spent some time in Liverpool. I spent some time, he said I was actually homeless at one point, traveling around, I was homeless. And um, he'd said, he's showing me like a club scene, like a, almost like a punk funk club area or something. And I think I'm in, Eng I don't know if I'm in England. I'm not sure where I'm at, where he's showing me, but it's kind of dark and, I'm in Europe somewhere, <laughs> like that helps, right? Great GPS, Bridget, great. Um, and it's dark and, um, you know, just trying to kind of hustle to get gigs and to get, um, to earn money and to get, you know, pay the rent. And he says, I was sleeping on a friend's couch for like three months before I, you know, could finally get a place. And it was a crappy place, but I had a place for a while. And then, you know, and he shows me like a van. Like, I don't know if he's living out of a van or what the heck's going on. But I mean, he's like showing me vagabond, like almost, you know, like it was tough, like it was struggle in the beginning. And he says, I think that he's showing me, I think, and he's sharing with me this because Oh, thank you. That's really insightful. Wow. I'm just feeling the energy. Like, it's almost like he's putting the energy into my, <laughs> this is weird, the side of my head kind of. It's hard to explain this, you guys. I'm really trying to just be really authentic as this process unfolds. I could have done this off camera, but I wanted to do it on camera. Um, and then I could have done a nice, neat little channel for you, but I want you to see the background, how this really works. So it's like he's bringing, putting energy in, giving me files of information, and he's sharing with me. This is really insightful, though. He's sharing with me. He feels like it's important to share from the afterlife perspective that rock life, rock stars, people who are musicians, entertainers, um, he doesn't like the word entertainer, entertainer, but people who are, you know, rock stars and who are in the public eye like that, they struggle. They work so, you don't see all the work behind the scenes. You only see it once they get big. And he said, it's, it looks all glamorous. What you see is the glamorous and the image, the glamour. Here's a bug right here, the mosquito. That's Minnesota for you. Um, and what we see is like this glamorous imagery of them. And then sometimes we see like documentaries behind the scenes in the studios, that kind of thing. Or we hear about their work schedules and how they're like working 12, 14 hour days and stuff. And he's like, but you see the public in general, they see this perso persona of like this glamorous existence and that there are some people that are just so gifted that they just rise above and they're chosen and then they are shared with the public. And it's this very ethereal thing, he says, this very like chosen, divinely chosen kind of a thing. And he said, it's not at all. It's not at all like that. He's like, it is. That is not reality. You got to get off that. He says, get off that, get off it, get off that, get off that. He's like, just get off that. That's not reality, you know? And he's not complaining about working hard or anything like that. He's not complaining about his life. Um, 
He's showing me times when he was really dark, like very depressed and down and like there's a lot of drugs around and really being drawn into some really dark places. He's showing me that and he's saying, and in the, but in those times, you know, you make choices. Am I gonna live or am I gonna die? Am I gonna stay or am I gonna leave? Am I gonna stay or am I gonna go? That's what he says. Am I gonna stay or am I gonna go? And he's like, it's, it's those times that you just, you reconnect with who you are and what you want from life. And you realize that you are life. You are. So you are completely responsible for your destiny. Nobody else chooses you and makes everything easy for you. It's really this, this power that's innate, he says. It, it, it's naturally born inside of you. And I believe everybody has that. And some people think there's this star quality about certain people. And I would agree, I would certainly agree that there are some people that are born to be stars. But what does that really mean? Does that mean this glamorous vision of like your Hollywood or rock stars, you know, on the big concert venues and selling out huge venues and stadiums and touring and all that lavish, lavish um, stuff that you would depict a rock star to have. And the truth is it's not, it's not at all about that. For, for those, those who are really, that's just what they're made to do. And so it's just natural. Hmm. I feel very passionate, he says. I feel very passionate. And I'm certainly a proponent of dreams having dreams. And, you know, if you have one, you don't want to have regrets. He's like, I don't, he says, I don't really have regrets. He says, maybe a few, maybe a few. But I feel like it's relationships that he's, there's a regret for, which is common. I think that's really common, David, when I um, see, when I talk to other, um, other spirits, they share the same kind of thing. There's not the regret area or the feeling of, oh shoot, I missed out. I could have, you know, I could have had so much more fulfillment in my life in relationships and so is there a specific relationship that you would he's saying my daughter does he have kids i david i don't even know if you have children he said something about my daughter a daughter all right my daughter the whole he's like he's like He's not going to use this word. It's not cliche. He's using a different word that I don't understand it, really. I'm not sure if it's a European thing or what, but it translated in, for me, it would be cliche. It sounds cliche to say, you know, I want, I wish I would have spent more time with my family, but he says that's exactly, that's, but that's right. He says that's right on. That's right on. That's right on. I feel like he has a daughter. That seem, but also it kind of seems weird. Like my brain is going, what? That seems weird to me. He says, my daughter. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. I know something about you, Dave. I, wanna, I, don't know, I don't know if I should call you Dave or David. Like I feel like if I knew you really well, I might call you Dave, but I don't really know you. So maybe I should call you David. He's like, it, he says, you know, names don't really matter. Isn't that a funny thing? Is David Bowie your real name? No, he said no. Part of. It's a portion of my real name. I'm like, okay, it's part of my real name. I'm like, okay. I feel like David might be, or Dave, like something about my father's name. Something. I feel like his name is quite a bit longer. Like his real last name would be longer than Bowie. It seems like it shortened or it's different. No, it's different. I have a different name, he says. It's funny you should mention that. Names are curious, aren't they? Mm -hmm. So one thing I know about you, David, is I know that you, there was a special where you sang, I think with, was it Bing Crosby or Dean Martin? You sang Little Drummer Boy, D Bing, Bing Crosby, who is also on my list to channel, by the way, you guys, I love White Christmas, Bing Crosby. Oh. He's on my list, on my list. 
um, you, your voices were incredible. He's like, that was back in the 70s. He's like, wow, Bridget, that was, that's a way back, way back a machine. Yeah. He's like, were you even born yet? <laughs> like, oh, yes. Were you older? Were you like 68, David? I, he's not, I'm not landing on an age with him. So, and I think that he's kind of funny about it too. I don't know if he would actually tell me his real age necessarily. You know, it's kind of funny. Like, uh, he's like, oh, no, no, no. He's like, don't, don't, don't put me in the grouping of um, rock stars that musicians, he doesn't, musicians isn't right. Rock stars is more right kind of vibration as to how I would connect him or affiliate with him, just so you guys are aware. I'm using a different term than I usually would use. Um, but he says, don't put me in the group of rock stars that's like afraid to get old or they don't want to get age or anything like that. He's like, don't put me in that. I'm not that vain. I don't have a vanity complex. There's none of that going on here. He's like, I'm definitely, he's definitely like an artist creative type. That's what I would say. He's so creative and expressive, like um, just so expressive and with um, the way he looks and, and, and really um, almost like a like androgynous a little bit too in like his face and his structure and his features and even in what he's choosing to wear you know like I see really tight pants <laughs> and like leggings almost like leopard print leggings or something like that's what I see it I don't know for sure if that's David Bowie style but I see that and I see a lot of black leather like a leather jacket and that kind of thing but I see like the sleeve cut off and I see different things you know really kind of punk funky creative artistic but I also saw him as a cat which I don't know what that's about this morning like when I was like oh David Bowie's in the kitchen with Elvis I better go get ready so that I can look presentable to you all so I can record a video and channel him a little bit and it's the first one so it's going to be rough and you guys are here in the raw and this is how it can start so there you go and uh I saw him as like a cat like he had ca a cat nose and like Ear, the ears and the hair and the really kind of funk punk like but like a cat I don't know what that's from I'm like were you in the Broadway show cats or something <laughs> I don't know but he looked like a cat I'm like lion or cat you know like a lion or something I don't know cat cat I'm just gonna say cat like could have been leopard could have been lion could have whatever if you know what that is we put in the comments he's kind of laughing he's like <clears throat> he's like uh they're going to tell you what that means. I'm like, okay. He's like, I'm not going to say a word. He says, you really don't know me. No, I don't. He's like, that's okay. He's like, that's all right. That's how you get to know people, right? You have conversation. Yeah. And um, so Bowie or David, you feel like such an artist, very creative, super expressive, like, like a performing artist, like an um, actor. I feel you more like that. Um, rock star actor combination that's what I feel like he said um, I liked the movies like when it was MTV and videos and movies and I, I really enjoyed that creative artistic uh, producing that um, I feel like I feel I f okay I feel like he was a producer as well is that accurate yes absolutely yep absolutely so that's wow interesting all right Okay, so I feel I'm thinking 60s. It's hard because I can't, you, you look so much, um, when, you're, when there's disease in the body and I look at people and try to get a sense of how old they were when they died, it's hard to tell sometimes when they're, I mean, he really looks not his age either. He looks quite a bit older than he is. I'm thinking he's in his 60s. Could be 61, 64, 68, I don't know, somewhere in there. But I also saw 1964, so that's got to be significant. If you know what the significance of 1964 is, what you put in the comments below. All right. Well, David, I think we're going to wrap this one. I just wanted to get a chance to get to know you. I saw you, and I would look forward to getting some comments from some of your biggest fans and people that are just interested in you and your work and get some questions from them. Um, for you. I think that would be really great and I would look forward to getting to know you and your work and your music. I couldn't even think, to be honest with you, I could not even think of a song that you sang. I know people are going to be throwing popcorn at the screen, like yelling at Bridget. Please no hate mail. <laughs> no hate comments. I'm just authentic here. Um, 
That would be great. I, I really look forward to getting to know you better. So, so thank you so much for being here. And I want to shake his hand. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate the time. Yeah, have a wonderful day. All right, so um, I will. Thank you. All right, so that's a video, just an introductory with David Bowie. Like I said, you guys, I don't know anything about him. So you got to educate me and post, post some questions, some things that I should talk to him about or things that are interesting that you think would, hey, Bridget, this would be a great conversation. Ask him about this. Ask him about that. Let me know. And then we'll have some more conversations with him because I think David Bowie um, in Europe or across the pond in the UK is kind of like our prince here, you know, or even our Michael Jackson here. Like he's really got this ultra star power, but I also feel like this huge creative side from very artistic, expressive. I think the producing piece for him is something that would really leave a legacy with other people and imprint on other, other artists and things. I just, the genres and the, I'm just the, incredible creativity, the costuming and the expression and the acting and the just the, the full picture in the rock kind of area, the rock star kind of area. Just very interesting, very interesting to me. All right. <laughs> this is a different video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, leave, please leave comments and ask questions so that I could do another session with David Bowie. And I intend to do more. This is just an introductory kind of scratch the surface, get to know him a little bit. Me, vibrationally, I have to kind of start to feel the energy so I know how to channel it because it's just like meeting new people. You're not really yourself the first time. That's just how I am as a channel, I guess. I got to be comfortable and I got to be able to feel connected. And I want that process to be pure and really authentic. And I'm glad you're able to be part of it this week. This is Bridget at Above Life Channel. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to never miss a weekly channeling video, please subscribe. Click that red bell icon on YouTube and subscribe. As always, the purpose of Above Life Channel is to inspire your spirit. And I hope that we've done that today. Remember, it is your life. So live it. Thanks for being here.